America's criminal justice system has never treated all citizens equally. To understand how we got here, we need to take a look at the evolution of the juvenile justice system. Back before the American Revolution, the colonies followed the common law of England when it came to criminal justice. This means that children were held accountable as adults. In 1646, Puritans in Massachusetts enacted a statute called the Stubborn Child Law. This made child disobedience a capital offense, allowing a death penalty option. But then things started to change. In the 19th century, the idea emerged that children should be taken care of by the state. This notion ultimately empowered the state to serve as a guardian. In 1825, the New York House of Refuge opened for juveniles only. They were called delinquents to distinguish them from criminals. Reformers stressed that delinquents could be reformed, and if properly supported, they wouldn't turn into lifelong criminals. In 1899, Chicago reformers, also known as child savers, many of them disenfranchised women, decided to fight for the defenseless. One reformer, Lucy Flower, had been an orphan herself. The child savers pushed for the creation of the first ever juvenile court. This wasn't like a regular court. There was no jury. The judge didn't look down from a bench, but sat at a desk. Julian Mack, one of the first such judges, said a kid should be made to feel that he is the object of its care and solicitude. This court was the first of its kind anywhere in the world. Kids didn't get prison time, but instead were put in institutions or, or programs. Like parents, the court tried to steer kids toward becoming responsible adults. Within 25 years, most states started to think the same thing. Juvenile courts popped up everywhere, even in other countries. But for children of color, things were different. They were sometimes banned from houses of refuge or juvenile detention centers. And when convicted, they were more likely to be placed in adult prisons. Under Jim Crow laws, some cities like Memphis established separate juvenile courts for kids of color. A police officer, not a judge, presided over this court. After World War II, Americans seemed to relish the concepts of liberty and justice. The civil rights movement was well underway. Activists began to realize that while juvenile courts were designed to be less punitive, they didn't provide the constitutional rights enjoyed by adults. In 1967, for instance, 15-year-old Gerald Galt was accused of making an indecent phone call to a neighbor. Gerald was arrested without anyone informing his parents. No record was made of his appearance before a judge or the neighbor who complained. Gerald was committed to a state school until he was 21. An adult with the same charge might have received a $50 fine and two months incarceration. Gerald's parents brought his case to the Supreme Court. In 1967, that august body ruled that juveniles were entitled to due process. Then in the 70s, America started rethinking its criminal justice system. Crime had spiked, including juvenile crime. And in 1978, New York City passed the Juvenile Offender Act, a law that made it possible to try kids as young as 13 in adult court for murder charges and as young as 14 for other violent crimes like assault and robbery. That law caused states across the country to reinterpret who could enter the prison system as an adult. They were afraid that a new breed of super predators would sweep over the nation. Today, America incarcerates more juveniles than any country in the world. Every day, 53,000 children are locked up. That's more than a sold out crowd at a major league baseball game. Nearly 60% of these children are black or Latinx. Today, certain rights like the Sixth Amendment and the right to a speedy trial or a trial by jury remains only applicable to adults. Advocates have succeeded in getting almost all states to raise the age at which you are considered an adult to 18, but if you commit certain severe crimes, you can still be tried as an adult in the adult court and serve adult time. What up, y'all? This is Felice Leon with The Root. We are dedicated to bringing you more series and videos like this, and we need your help. Let us know what you thought below and also subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Peace.